Hi, my name is Julianne Cost, and in the next few minutes, we're going to take a look at some of the great features in Lightroom Mobile. Now, as soon as you launch Lightroom and sign in, you can see that there's a new look and feel. The interface has been updated, making it much easier to find and navigate through a large number of collections. There's also a new All Photos view at the top of the screen. If we tap anywhere in this top bar, we can see all of the photographs that we've either synchronized from Lightroom on the desktop or have imported using Lightroom Mobile or Lightroom Web. By default, the view is segmented, making it easy to browse through your photos in a timeline view. When you tap and hold any of the segments, the other time frames that you can choose from appear. If there are more than two rows of thumbnails in a segment, Lightroom shows how many additional images there are. Tapping on that number will reveal all of the images. If you ever want to collapse the segment, you can use a vertical two-finger pinch, basically pinch from the top and bottom towards the center. There are additional options available in the drop-down menu across the top, including an option to display a flat view. And you can filter your images. I'll choose two stars. This is allowing me to see all of the two-star rated images across all of my collections. All right, let's turn off the filter by showing all, and then return back to segmented, and return back to the default view. Because we can now see so many more collections, you might want to change the organization. Tapping Organize allows us to choose from a variety of different options, as well as choose from ascending to descending. Now, I want to create and import a photograph using my mobile device, and I want to put it in a specific collection. So on the far right, I'll tap the plus icon to create a new collection. I'll call this Painting, and then tap OK. We can see that that new collection has been created right here. At the bottom of the screen, we can see that there are two ways to quickly import images. If you've already taken the photograph and they're in the camera roll, then you can tap that option. If, however, you want to take a photograph with your mobile device and have it automatically imported into Lightroom Mobile, then we'll tap the camera option in the lower right. But before I do that, because I want the photo to be imported not only to all photos, but to the specific collection that I just made, I'm going to tap that collection so that we're in that collection. Of course, after you take a photograph, you can always add and copy and move photographs between collections, but shooting directly into a collection is just my preferred workflow. So I'll tap on the camera icon. Across the bottom, you can see that I have a number of different options available, including different options for white balance. I also have exposure compensation if I want to manually override the exposure. I also have a number of different overlays that I can show, including a level which can really come in handy, and a self-timer. If I want to switch to the front camera, I can use the icon in the lower right. All right, let's go ahead and take a photograph, and then I'll return back to grid view by clicking on the icon. As you can see, the photo was automatically added to that collection, as well as added to the All Photos view here at the top. The photograph will also be uploaded to the cloud and synchronized with Lightroom on the desktop. And I should mention that you can also add video from the camera roll to Lightroom Mobile, and it will sync the video with the desktop app as well. Excellent. Let's take a look at a few of the editing controls that are available in Lightroom Mobile. I'm going to switch to maybe a more interesting collection. How about this one of Sydney? And then we'll select the first image. Now, if I want to flag or rate these images, certainly I can use the grabber handle to reveal the flags and ratings, but let's put that back and just use the speed rating. Now, by default, if I swipe up or down, I'm going to flag my image as a pick, or I can reject the image. But if I tap and hold, I have the option to select Speed Review Combined, which will allow me to not only flag, but also rate my images, depending on where I swipe. If I swipe on the left and drag up or down, you can see that I can add a picked or a reject. If I swipe and drag up or down on the right, then I can add a star rating. So I'll add two stars to this image, and then we can swipe to move through the different images. When I find an image that I like, I'll use my ratings by swiping up on the right-hand side. I could also use the film strip in order to move through my images more quickly. I'll go ahead and give this image a two-star as well. 
and then scroll to the tiger and give him two stars as well. Now, if I was on a smaller device, I might want to return back to the collection and use the option here in order to filter by two stars so that I don't have to move through so many images. In this case, because I'm on my iPad, I'll go ahead and show all, and then I'll tap on that first image that I want to edit. In this case, it's the giraffe. I want to start by straightening it, so I'll tap on Crop, and then use Auto Straighten in order to crop it. I'll apply that, and now, if you're not sure what you want to do, you can always start with a preset in order to create a look or a style to the image. I can use the more creative ones if I want to, or we can go to the sort of more subtle ones, like the dynamic one, which just gives it a little bit of boost. I think it's a little too much, so I'm going to go to Devibe. I like the desaturated look, but I would like to bring out the city in the background. So I'm going to move over to my adjustments, tap on the icon in the lower left here, and move to Dehaze. By selecting Dehaze and using the slider, we can see that I can actually remove some of the kind of atmosphere between here and the city. Now, if I want to see a quick before and after, I can use a three finger tap and hold. There's the before, and then I release, and there's after. All right, let's return back to the film strip here and work on another image. In this case, I want to select the tiger. Now, here I kind of know what I want to do. I want to darken down the background and desaturate it so that I bring the tiger, the primary subject, forward. In order to do this, I want to see the histogram. So I'll do a two finger tap. That will toggle on the histogram and the info. If I just want the histogram, I can do another two finger tap. That will hide it first and then it will hide the info and just show the histogram. Now I want to move to the adjustments. I'm going to start in the basic panel. I'll move over to my blacks areas here. I'm going to set a new black point by dragging that down to the left. I'm also going to decrease the shadow area a little bit, darkening down that background. I'll add a little bit of clarity just to add a little bit more sharpness, and I'll also add a little bit of highlights just to bring up the whites in the tiger. Now let's swipe back to the beginning of the options and move to color and black and white. I want to change the saturation, so I'll target that, and then I'll select the targeted adjustment tool, and then tap on the color that I want to desaturate, and swipe to the left in order to decrease that saturation. That's a little bit too much, so I'll just increase the saturation a little bit by swiping to the right. I also want to increase the saturation of the tiger, so again, selecting the targeted adjustment tool, and then tapping and dragging up, will increase the saturation in that color range. Then I want to add a slight vignette, so I'll tap again on the icon, choose Vignetting, select the amount, and then decrease the amount in order to add a darker vignette. Again, a three finger tap and hold, there's before and there's after. All right, returning back to the film strip one more time, I'm going to move over to this image here, which I want to convert to black and white. I also need to crop it, so let's select Crop. I'm going to change the aspect ratio to 4 by 5, and then just drag this down a little and reposition the image. I'll tap the check in order to apply that, and then let's start with a preset here for black and white. I'm going to choose a contrast of 25, and then move over to the detail options. I'm going to add a high amount of clarity, then move over to effects and add a blur vignette. You'll notice that when I tap the vignette heavy, it actually removes the blur vignette. So in order to apply the blur, I'll add it here using a preset and then I can darken down the vignette using my different adjustment options. So I'll move to adjust. Since I'm already in the vignette options, I'll go ahead and decrease that amount. Then I'll move to the color and black and white options. Now I want to change the luminance here. It's already selected since I chose black and white as my preset. I'll choose the targeted adjustment tool and then click on the color range that I want to adjust. I'll tap on the coat and then swipe to the right in order to lighten that color range. Now if I tap on the film strip area down here, we can see that I have two images that are very similar, and I'd like to apply the same settings from this image to the other one. So I'll tap and hold and choose Copy Settings. I want to copy everything except for the crop, so I'll make sure that that's unchecked. Tap OK, move to the other image, tap and hold, and then paste those settings. 
Now, if I want to share this image, I can tap on the Share icon, and then choose Share and select from any of the different options here. Or if I wanted to continue editing this in something like Photoshop Mix or Photoshop Fix, I could choose Open In, and then I could select from the list here, and Lightroom Mobile would hand this off directly to one of those other apps. If I want to share the entire collection, then I'll back out to the collection, I'll tap on the Share icon, and then I can choose to share the collection. If I share the collection, it will create a URL so that anyone who has access to a browser can view the images. They can even comment and like the photos, which would then be synchronized via Lightroom on the desktop. Or we can share with another application like Adobe Slate or Adobe Clip. So there we have it, some of the incredible features in Lightroom Mobile. My name is Julianne Cost. Thanks for watching.